outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello and welcome to Country with Selene. On today's episode, she is an up-and-coming female force in the country music scene. Her songs are honest anthems and she has over 20,000 listeners on Spotify, which is only the beginning. So please welcome Brie Fletcher. I know that I want the best for you. I know that I want to be there too. But you're addicted to the drama, imaginary karma, high on codependency. You know that I want the best. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Okay, so first things first. You and Katie wrote a song called Glow, which is a female empowerment song, in all honesty. And it's an all-female collaboration. And the song is set to be streamed everywhere on March 31st, which is this Wednesday. And the music video to follow that will be released this Wednesday as well, which is super exciting. So you gotta love the girl power there. So what influenced you and Katie to release and write a song like this? Yes, so um, Katie and I were just instantly connected as like friends and songwriters. And so we had chatted for a while and then we're like, you know, we haven't written yet. Let's write together. And the first time we wrote together, she was like, okay, I know this is a crazy idea, but hear me out. And I was like, hit me with it. I am always down to write a crazy idea. And she said, I want to write a song about a glow stick. And I was like, okay, tell me more. (laughs) Tell me more. Um, And she was like, I really love the idea that like, it doesn't glow until you break it. Just Mm -hmm. like, you know, as women, we're constantly under pressure to, you know, attain this perfect image or, you know, try to like maintain equality in just so many different ways that we hold pressure in our own lives. And we really do strive under pressure. And I think like the idea of like, that's how a diamond gets made. That's how like, and it just all came together so cohesively. And I was like, let's just tell every woman's story that we can think of that has gone through something like that and let's just make it an anthem and we did just like a diamond clear gold or a glow stick yeah doesn't glow until you break it doesn't shine until you make it that i swear the glow is found glitter that's on the ground so don't feel bad when you snap and let the colors through the pressure is on to all these different artists their automatic answer was yes 100 percent, i'm in yeah i was like i was nervous that i wasn't gonna find enough people because to be honest i'm still fairly new to nashville and i was like when i reached out to them i was like you know what i love you and your music and i I support your journey and i just want to like support you as a as a woman as an artist doing your own thing and i think that was one of the key words is that they also felt supported and like Mm -hmm. that i really did want them because i truly did like I want every woman in Nashville to just feel like supported and encouraged because it can get hard. Yeah, there's so many people in the music industry and the media industry who kind of just want to tear you down at the yeah. same time, right? So it's so nice to have females behind your back like 24/7 and su- females supporting other females. It's it's so nice when that happens. It it needs to happen more, I would it's think in the world. I totally think it needs to just be like the the normal now you know no 100 percent um and now let's go to another song of yours uh because i love you that song seems so genuine and seems like it came straight from your heart so how personal was that song to write for you that was a really personal song for me and you know listening back to it now i'm like wow that's like that's probably one of the most vulnerable songs that like i've ever written And I think that like a lot of people can get like confused by the song, but I think that's a good thing because you can kind of portray it to any situation in your life. But pretty much the gist of it is we all tend to self-sabotage sometimes, Um, but it's not because we don't love that person. I know I'm gonna hurt you, but it's only because I love you. I know you don't want to hurt me, but it's only because you love me. song 
of yours. I'm just going to skip, like, go all through your songs because there's so many good ones. Like, I have to go through them all. So, Pessimist, that's your latest release. Um, so, pretty much depicts how being a pessimist and a realist is not always a bad thing from being an optimistic person and seeing things from the opposite side of being optimistic is, oh my god, these words are so big. I know, they're big words. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, being a pessimist is also, like, not always a bad thing and it's better to see things from that side of the bucket the wall than the other side you're understanding where I'm getting out with this exactly so was there a situation where you saw the glass half empty instead of half full yeah and I think like that's first off pessimist is the most me song I've ever written it's like my personality to a T <laughs> um, I'm very proud of it but like I I think that I wanted to be like everybody does kind of portray me as such, such a pessimist which is weird because I'm like a dreamer and a creative as well um but in all honesty I just I see things very like like real like mm -hmm. I'm I'm very like type a like I'll be honest with you type of thing and and I think that's kind of helped me in my career because yes I can dream but I also know how to do it realistically um, and I think that seeing the glass half empty sometimes like, oh, I know that I'm not going to start out touring, yeah. you know, millions of fans, but I, I know how to get there. And like, I know, like I can start here and then one day I will just like work my way up to that. And I think that's a really healthy approach to have. Some say I'm a pessimist, but I'm a realist, live in the really healthy approach because you can't just think automatically like you're saying boom I'm gonna go tour or boom I'm gonna be the president of the United States whatever the case may be right it, there's steps to it right and you have to be a realist it, it's good to be a realist but it's also yes it's good to be optimistic but you still have to see things from the other side of uh, the wall um, and now around Christmas time you released a rendition of Silent Night now that was premiered on CMT. So I want to ask you, was that the first time a video of yours has been premiered on CMT? That is the first time. I okay. Was yeah, I had a feeling. So explain to me, describe that moment of witnessing that for the first time. So I called my husband screaming. I was like, they're going to premiere it. They're going to like, I was so excited because I've been a fan of CMT since I was a little girl, just being like yeah. one day, you know, one day. Um, and I've, I've, out of all things, you know, a Christmas song that I just like put together very quickly got on there and I was like, this is amazing. This just goes to show you that like everything is the right time in the right place. If you just like keep pursuing and keep mm -hmm. doing things, it'll, it'll eventually happen. It will happen. And you manifested it too. You gotta say that. You manifested it. <laughs> you're watching CMT as a kid dreaming, oh, one day I'm going to be on it. And look, now you're on it. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> um, and now let's get to know Brie Fletcher on a more personal level. So you are the founder of De Bully My School, which you hold a very special place in your heart because you were a teen who was also affected by bullying. So you understand what kids and teenagers go through um, in this day and age. So you found your escape through music when it came to bullying. So can you just elaborate on the De Bully My School's mission? Yeah, so... Um from like middle school to like the early stages of high school, I was really, really struggling with being bullied by like both teachers and students. And I was just at such a dark place that I like didn't know how to process what was happening in my life. And the only way for me to do that was to connect with music and to write music and to sing music. I literally would be like in math class being like, I'm going to write a song. So I'm very upset, you know, yeah. just like very, very creative, you know, just writing about math. But, um, when I graduated, I was like, I know I want to do music, and I know that that is what a lot of people want to do, so if I want to do music, how do I make, like, a change with music, mm -hmm. really, and so I sat down with my dad, and I was like, this is what I want to do, this is what I've gone through in my life, how do we combine it, and he really helped me just, like, set a game plan and be like, so you're going to go tell your story in schools, you're going to sing your own songs, and then you're going to sing songs they know, and you're really going to touch people's lives and help and motivate them and honestly it's the most gratifying thing that I've ever done and I wish I could get back to it soon I'm, I'm like trying to like how can you do virtual stuff now but like yeah. I so so miss talking to those kids and hearing their stories and and I think the kids these days really just relate to music and they love to to be healed from it 
And now your debut single was Believe in Me. And in my perspective, that was a total anthem for bullying. Oh, yeah. That was like, I feel like growing up, especially as as a girl, I know guys feel it too, but you're just like, you're constantly comparing yourself to people and, mm-hmm. and tearing yourself down. And for so long, I didn't know how to believe in myself. I didn't know how to think that I was enough or that I was worthy. And, and so that was the first song I ever wrote when I moved to Nashville. Um, and it has been my anthem that I sing to myself all the time. Like, you know, you got this for you. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> them to chant like every day if if that's your song even if for me it's not my song I didn't write it but it's a song that I would listen to every single day because it it, I was just listening to it like before this interview and I'm like damn like I really want to listen to this every single day now it made me feel so good I was working out and I had it in the background I'm like oh my god I'm, I'm worthy as hell like you know what I mean that is the best compliment if you can work out to music and it like makes you like motivated that is the best compliment I know, and usually when you think about working out, you're thinking like, oh, house music or like rap, but I was listening to that, I'm like, oh my God, this is motivating me. So what made you, so you were saying that um, bullying kind of like pushed you, you were writing songs and it kind of was your escape. So what, did you know that music was always something that you wanted to pursue professionally or was it more something after you graduated, you were like, hey, I want to actually pursue this? No, I was 1000% that really annoying child who would just go around and be like, hey, hey, do you know what I want to be when I grow up? I'm going to be a singer. Hey, like I was from age three, I was performing on stage like, like I owned it or I was very much very certain of exactly what I wanted to do. And honestly, I've never, ever even considered anything else. else? Yeah. Well, if you have a dream, you go through, you go for that dream, right? Yeah. You should post videos though. If you have videos of you three years old singing on stage, I think I think my mom does somewhere. I need to get her to send them to me because they're probably really entertaining. Yeah, and you gotta post the video of you at three years old, then you gotta post one now. Yeah, the before. Yeah, Um, interesting. So, did you grow up with a musical background? Was your mom a singer? Your dad played piano, guitar. What was it? Yeah, so uh, I grew up in church. My dad was a pastor, and my mom was a worship leader. So, constantly on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom was constantly singing. She toured, you know, when she was younger with like a gospel group. And so sh- she was always singing and I was just always with her on stage. And then eventually I was like, you know what? I got this. Like, let, mom, let me do it. You know? <laughs> let me do it on my own. <laughs> she was so supportive. And I think that she, it was amazing because she understood like exactly why I wanted to do what I wanted to do because a lot of parents you know they're like go to college or like you know have a realistic dream but she understood the dreamer side of me and so did my dad and so that was amazing to have like them understand like that it's just something inside of you that like wants to perform and you know speak to people and when you have your parents support that helps a lot compared to parents who are more on the side of oh get a real job or oh get go do something else so it's nice that your parents are very supportive like that so where exactly did you grow up did you grow up in Nashville or you just recently moved to Nashville so I've only been in Nashville for two years I grew up in Fort Worth Texas I was born and raised in Texas and um literally from like I think when I was 12 I kept saying I'm gonna move to Nashville I'm gonna move to Nashville and so I finally did it but (laughs) I was very very like outspoken of exactly where I wanted to go. (laughs) So um, how do you like living in Nashville? I love Nashville. I think that it is one of the most just like the energy in Nashville is a fun energy and people are really supportive and just like there's music everywhere so you can't not be inspired. Um, It's expensive but it's fun. (laughs) It's expensive but there's so much talent down there too and like I've been to Nashville once and I am determined to move there too exactly like you. Oh totally do it if you can. It's 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 a really cool city and there's always going to be somebody cheering you on. Oh I love that. I'm excited now. (laughs) So who would you say were your musical influences? Um, Growing up like I remember like the people that I listened to on repeat were like Rascal Flatts and Kelly Clarkson. Um, 
I, I remember wanting to be Kelly Clarkson and honestly, I, I still would take that, that spot in a heartbeat. Um, but yeah, just them, Carrie Underwood, just listening a lot to like non-traditional people who can kind of like go in different genres, I feel mm -hmm. like was a good uh, reference for me because I never really fit in like a super pop or a super country genre. I was kind of like, I can do whatever feels yeah. right. And, you hear work. that in your voice as well, that you have like the country voice, but you also have like the pop, like I can hear your voice even being on like an EDM track, like Ellie Golden. like I can see that happening. I feel like I could be a chameleon, and honestly, I feel like at this stage in life, it's like music yeah. isn't a genre, it's a feeling, so I just go by that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good way to look at it. So who would you say would be your dream collaboration? Oh gosh, there's so many. I mean... Kelly Clarkson and Rascal Flatts are up here, dreams, and then there's also like Dan and Shay or like Marin Morris, um, even like new people, there's a band called Seaforth, they're freaking amazing, mm -hmm. I would love to collaborate with them, just, just really talented people, anybody who can do a run, I'm like, I want to collaborate with <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, well I'm sure you're going to collaborate with a lot of people, you're just starting out, but you got a long way to go. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, anytime. So before I let you go, we're going to play a little game I like to call Country with Celine Rapid Fire. So pretty much the fans get to know you more, not so much about music-wise, but like kind of about what you like and stuff like that. So yeah. the first question is, where is your dream travel destination? Uh, the Maldives. I really want to go there. You know how many people have been saying that when I've been asking? Like Bora Bora there? Like, it's <laughs> more than the business right now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. What we would do to be there right now is right. Um, so what's your favorite quote? If you think of um, my favorite quote is a Bible verse, Psalms 139. Um, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That really helped me through some hard times. Make, I'm going to make sure to look that one up. <laughs> um, and your celebrity crush. Oh, I tell my husband this all the time. Hugh Jackman is just a dream and I know that's like so weird because he's just, like twice my age but oh it's him. okay he's a dilf let's just leave it at that yeah. <laughs> um so what would be your go-to karaoke song my go-to karaoke song is bleeding love because that's the only one that I can nail every single time <laughs> every single time so you just stick to it <laughs> oh my gosh that's good well thank you so much Bree for joining me on country with Celine everyone make sure to watch out for glow releasing this Wednesday it's going to be a good one I got to hear a sneak peek of it and I already love it so thank you again Bree yes thank you so much for having me it's been an amazing time Do one, trying to be a boss babe. dream is trying to create